on today's video i saw it significant that we should discuss about maintenance and the service plan well some people find it hard to distinguish between the two especially when a person is a first-time car buyer in some car brands service and maintenance plan is standard while in some car brand is an optional extra dealerships have a way of making it feel as if they are giving you a bargain when they include service and maintenance plan into the deal where it's not standard and now you're getting ripped off okay i know the statement that i've just made may not be relatable in some people so allow me to make a practical example in 2019, the retail price of a Polo Vivo Comfort Line was 192000 without any optional extras. When the car was in the showroom of the dealership, it had an overpriced MSRP of 233,298 rands. So the salesman was like, Hey, Mr. Ngala, we will give you a dealer assistance of 10,000 plus free service plan and maintenance plan included in the price you know how the mind works whenever something is usually mentioned as being free the reasoning capacity gets compromised especially when the dopamine levels are so high when you're made to believe that you're getting a bargain so i ended up falling for the trap side the deal candio I've shot myself in the foot. So the service plan covers uh, replaceable items on the car that are predetermined by the manufacturer to keep your car running in a perfect condition. Things like engine oil, a filter, pollen filter, spark plug form a part of the things that are usually covered in the service plan. Other th items included in the service plan are cam belt, brake fluid, and coolant also at the labor because at the end of the day the technician that will be hired to work on your car has to be paid so the maintenance plan covers all the things that are covered by the service plan inclusive of the cost of replacing damaged or, or worn items such as brake pads brake disc wiper blades globes and fuses the cost of mechanical items like exhaust system, the engine, the clutch, the gearbox and the electrical components are also covered. It is tough to say what isn't covered um, in the maintenance plan because this depends on who is offering the plan. But generally your tires, um, alignment, uh, windscreen are not included in the maintenance plan. I know what I have said is actually enticing to hear and um, you might probably think that all of these components will be changed at the owner's discretion and now there are prerequisites that has to be followed in order to determine which part is due to be replaced. There is a way limit that is determined by the dealership. They don't just change any part just because the customer feels it's time for that part to be replaced okay let me make an example so that i'll ensure that we are all on the same page let's say you've brought your car for a service then you feel like um the brake discs are due to to be changed so if upon inspection the technician finds out that your well limit of the brake disc is 19.2 then the stipulated wheel limit is 19 they won't replace that part just because it's 0.2 millimeters above the stipulated wheel limit even if they say that um the current wheel limit won't last you uh, until the next service so again please tell me is the service plan or i mean is the maintenance plan worth having well I guess you usually you should use your own description to answer that question. The Chanel's car had a maintenance plan of 60,000 kilometers or four years, whichever came first. The 
the only thing that they replaced hustle free were the caps of the wheel valves and some components like uh, brake disc, brake pads, and uh, wiper blades. I had to deal with a lot of ridiculous wear limit, of which that was so frustrating for a person who thought um, having a maintenance plan means a car would be fixed hassle free. So I took the car for a 15,000 uh, service, of which they didn't change much except for the car fluid. The 30,000 kilometers basics were done and the wipers were changed. At 45,000 kilometers, well, the brake pads were worn out and was actually replaced. As much as the rear wiper was worn out, well, the dealership claimed to have um, the rear wiper out of stock. But then again, tell me, how can a product be out of stock? when the dealership receives cars to be serviced almost every day but then i guess that it's the gimmick of the dealership to avoid paying as they should the recommended time frame to change the battery is after every three years well my battery started to have some problems in a case that you would find out if you were to play some music for plus minus five to ten minutes the car will need to be jump start I raised my concern about the battery at 45,000 kilometers, but then the dealership claimed to may have done some tests on the battery and the battery came out to be okay according to their findings, of which I wasn't satisfied with their work because this actually continued until 60,000 kilometers. The radio couldn't seek any radio stations properly and when I should have raised this, they claimed that the towers were faulty and whatnot, of which this was so controversial because when I actually did the same to the brand new car on the floor, the car could seek the radio stations properly. And they refused to replace the brake disc because it was above the wear limit. They offered to replace the brake disc at 75,000 km service for 3,800 of which I refused for obvious reasons and I went to buy an aftermarket brake disc for 750. They offered to replace the faulty number plate light for 195 friends of which I refused for obvious reasons and went to find a replacement for 5 friends. With that being said, I hope by now you have decided whether or not it's advantageous to upgrade the service plan to a maintenance plan. So please like, subscribe and turn on the notification bell so that you can be notified each time I upload a new video. Until next time.